Hello and welcome once again in English. I'm Naomi McLaughlin and this is another live cast. I will quickly share this over to my page as always. And if you're wondering why I said in English, that's because I'm doing live casts in German as well now because I received a couple of emails um, from German speaking business owners who were interested in my tips but found it difficult to follow because I speak fast. Thank you for the likes. Um, I speak fast when I do speak English and then it's difficult for them to actually listen, understand and then apply those tips which I only share in English. So I'm, as I'm German, for obvious reasons, it makes really big sense, right? If I do have followers and people who like my tips, but if I make it easier for them, which is a reason why I now um, publish in German language as well. So for people not only in Germany, but also in Austria and in Switzerland, right? Okay, let me quickly share this over. People might be wondering, oh, loving the hearts. <laughs> I can see that. This is awesome. Right, okay. Over to my own timeline, right? Okay, there we go. And then over to another group. So that's the only difference now between English and German because I only run one page because I don't want to, I mean, clutter my Facebook, right? Um, I'm, I always have to just share it to one page and not to two. But in this case, in English language, I do have to share it to a couple. So, right, okay, yesterday, as you might remember, if you've watched the replay or if you've been live with me, I talked about how to um, grow a list and how to actually please your followers and your the people who want to get onto your list, right? And that's the theme and topic for today's live cast. So um, just to quickly recap, um, you do need an email list in order to direct mail people, right? So your potential customer, customers and clients, but also your current customers and clients. The best way to contact them nowadays is either directly mobile onto their phone if you get access to their phone number. And if you don't, then for obvious reasons, an email address is um, the best way because you can share links, you can share your email newsletter, updates, coupon codes, and also any type of news about your business and your um, products and services, the ones you sell, right? So, and also you can actually use their email address to send out a survey, which is another great option to actually get some feedback um, about the products and services you sell. So today I want to quickly talk about how to actually, number one, get them onto your list. Number two, allow them to receive what they actually signed up for. That's number two. And number three, to stay on your list and actually take action and take the links you share or the blog posts you share or the information you share to actually go ahead and then hopefully purchase whatever you are trying to sell. So getting to number one. Obviously, the first thing you need is a sign up page. Now you might be asking what's a sign up page. A sign up page is practically a page linked to your website or and linked to your email provider, which actually grabs their email address and name. And if you wanted to, you could actually ask for more than just email address and name, but don't make it too specific or um, too, too long wired because obviously people might just click close and head off to another page, right? So you want them to share with you their name and their email address, which is which are the most two important parts, obviously, because you want to speak to them and you need to um, get into their inbox. And you would only get there, obviously, if you have access to their address. So you need a sign up page. All you need to have on the sign up page, though, is not just uh, a box actually asking for name and email address, but also a free giveaway. And the reason why is because obviously the internet allows them to browse for almost any type of information about almost any type of topic, right? So why would they share their email address and name with you if you don't, on the other hand, um, give them access to something they might actually want? And now comes the big, 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 big key factor here, which is whatever freebie you give away. So let's say it might be a template, it may, might be a how-to list, it might be a free ebook, it might be an audio cast or a webcast or access to a webinar or something like that. In any case, it needs to be 100% related to whatever you sell. 
So don't fall into the trap to make something like a free giveaway or win whatever, win X, Y, Z, if you sign up with your email address and your name, because then you will actually end up with people on your email list who don't want to actually buy your products. They're not interested in the product. They're only interested in maybe winning a new iPhone or winning a new tablet or whatever you want to give away, right? Or uh, a gift basket or something. It highly needs to be connected with whatever you sell. I mean, obviously, if you are in the mobile phone business and you are giving away um, a mobile phone, then actually that makes sense. However, if you sell clothes or shoes or flowers or I don't know, any type of service, right? Then only give something away that's actually related to the solution they're looking for, right? So that's highly important to filter out all those people from the start who are only looking to get something for free but don't really need a solution for their problem, right? So like I said, that one is the key, key, key number one factor that you have a sign up page to request their name and their email address. And if you really wanted to go a little further, then maybe also their mobile phone number so that you can actually text them or phone them directly if you have, um, if you operate a call center or, or something like that, right? But you always obviously have to let them know what you're going to do with their email address. So don't hand it out to a third party unless you've told them in the terms and conditions which should be directly under the sign up box. Don't put them somewhere hidden because that will just upset people and they will get off your list as soon as they receive something they never asked for. So that's highly important. Only send them something they actually ask for. So if they sign up for a freebie and newsletter, that's what you're gonna send them. Don't send them anything other than that, right? I mean, of course you can send them offers, of course you can send them coupon codes, but they need to be related with what they've whatever they've um, signed up for initially. So if they've only signed up for a win whatever XYZ item, don't expect them to stay on your list because if they haven't won anything, they're not, why would they stay on your list, right? So you don't want any people leaving your lists um, because they're frustrated because you've sent them something they didn't ask for, right? And don't share any personal details. That's not just data protection law in the UK and in many other countries. That's also just best practices and best behavior. I mean, obviously you don't want your email address shared with third party if you haven't signed up for it. So why would they want that? So keep them safe. As obvious, I mean, as a business, you should have high standards. So don't share any anybody's um, data with, with, with whoever you want it to. So don't, just don't. Right, so that was number one. And then keeping them on your list. So that's number two. How do you keep them on your list and not unsubscribe as soon as they've received the freebie, right? So my way of doing it is, like I said in step one already, stay within whatever solution they were looking for in the first place. So for instance, if somebody signs up with my Professional Home Educator Academy and gets a freebie, which in this case is a free ebook um, which teaches parents how to teach their own children how to read better or to, to make um, reading enjoyable, I'm not gonna send them any offers in terms of business coaching, consulting or multimedia. They're not interested in that, right? They have signed up for Professional Home Educator Academy, so they're teaching their children at home like I did mine. So they are only interested in that. By coincidence, they might be interested in anything else. However, if they are on that list, that's all they're gonna get. They're gonna get everything related to homeschooling, right? Because that's what they've signed up for and that's how I keep them within my email list. Same applies for my business people, so um, which is obviously a bigger list because that's what I'm doing every day. The homeschooling, homeschooling is a program I do offer, but that's not my main thing online, right? So the business coaching obviously is my biggest part within my business structure. So obviously, uh, I would say 99% of people are really looking for business solutions or for multimedia marketing strategies or solutions or content strategy and those kind of things. So obviously within this realm, I can give them a little bit more. So it might be something about entrepreneurship. It might be something about lean management or uh, human resource management or something like that. However, that's all relating back to business. So give them whatever they've signed up for and nothing else, right? 
And if you do decide to offer something else, you can always add that within the newsletter for that list and then ask them if they're happy to sign up for it, here's a link for a new email list. So you wouldn't tell them this is a new email list, but you would say something like, here's a, if, I mean, something like, um, I don't know, I'm giving away free eBooks for fitness, right? If you're interested, head over to, and then you leave the link there, and then they can sign up for a free ebook, and then they're on your fitness list, right? But if you're generally speaking a landscaper, then obviously don't offer them any fitness stuff, even if that's part of your business structure, right? So that might be a side brand you're, you're running, or even the brand you want to run for good, and you want to decrease the amount of landscaping you do, right? In any case, the people who are on the landscaping email list, might not be interested in fitness so don't lose them by sending them fitness stuff because they haven't signed up for that one right so offer them a link where they can once again sign up if they're interested in something else that's fine but don't spam people who have signed up for something else right and then the last one so let me think so you now we've now discussed how you actually get access to their email address and name and telephone number if you wanted to then how to keep them on your list and then how to the third part would be how to get them to actually buy something from you right okay I think people need to get to know you to like you and to trust you and I'm sure you've heard that before so that's obvious this is the key of it right somebody might be coming and coming across your website or your web shop or something and just find your option the best solution for their problem and they will just go ahead and buy. However, if they first come into your funnel using an email to sign up for a freebie, then the best thing to do is to nourish them with really high quality content. So keep them in the loop on a weekly basis if you want or on a bi-weekly uh, basis. What I dislike, to be honest, is getting too many email emails per week from the same company. However, if the content is brilliant, I'm actually looking forward to the content and receiving more and more emails, right? So you kind of have to figure out how many times you can maintain it and then maintain it. So if you can only figure out a one monthly newsletter, then do so and stick with that schedule. If you've got more time to spare or more things to offer, if your offer isn't just a single service, right? But you offer several different services within an industry, then obviously you can send out more emails with more offers in them. But I think it's important to always give some type of information and then some type of offer within your email campaigns so, um, so that people actually get alerted about whatever is going on with your business, but also get some free access to some information, maybe industry information, maybe new data coming in, maybe new surveys coming in maybe a new blog post you've created or any other multimedia content you've created and then you can add it right so so that's the important thing nourish them and keep them in the loop what's going on and what you have to offer and i think that's the best way of keeping people within your email list and within your campaigns and then obviously growing your reach and your profits and your sales or first of all your sales and then as a, as a result of out of that, you would get higher profits because you sell more um, items, more products and services to your existing customers, but also your potential customers who are on your email list and you um, have the chance to get to know you in the right way and not the wrong way, right? So you don't share their details with anybody else and you keep them happy by sending them only material they've actually requested and don't spam them with useless stuff, right? So don't make it easy and just copy paste useless stuff just to send something out. If you have nothing to say, say so. Say there haven't, haven't been any updates, but this is a great product I'm selling, so tell them about your great product or service, right? But don't spam them with, with useless stuff. So I can only repeat myself here because that is important and that's the most annoying thing anyways. I'm sure you've unsubscribed from email lists before because people have been sending you useless stuff or sending you stuff you didn't ask for or shared your details with somebody else, right? So we shouldn't be doing that in order to build a global brand. And that's it for me for today. So my call to action for you is to leave me a comment underneath 
or to leave me a comment um, on the page in general. You can always direct mail me with any questions you have. And if you haven't joined the Global Brand Strategy Success Club, then please do so. I would be happy to welcome you and to help you to grow a global brand. So that's it from me. And by the way, just a quick tip. If you are interested in listening to all of this in German, then of course head over to my new German page where I share everything I'm saying here, but in German language. I mean, it's not one-to-one, -one, so it's not exactly the same video, I mean, for obvious reasons, because I also start from zero and just explain what is a global brand, how do we build that, how do we use our business uh, products and services to grow a global brand, right? So obviously, if you're able to understand English, awesome, stay here. If you don't, head over to my German page and I will leave the link underneath this video in the comment section below. Oh, my <laughs> battery is almost dead, so I have to stop here. Have a lovely morning, day, evening or night, wherever you are in the world. I'm Naomi McLaughlin. Thank you so much for watching. Goodbye for now. Ciao.